Hello, in this demo, we are going to talk about how Portworx can help you build disaster recovery solutions for your applications that are running on top of Red Hat OpenShift. In this example, we are going to use a demo application that has a mix of Kubernetes pods or containers and virtual machines that are running on Red Hat virtualization or the KubeWord project. All of these components are deployed in the same namespace and we are going to use Portwax DR to build a synchronous disaster recovery solution that enables or that gives you zero RPO and zero data loss when a disaster strikes and you have to fail over between your primary and your secondary sites or primary and your secondary Kubernetes clusters or OpenShift clusters in this example. So let's see the demo application that we have for this specific demo. It's a simple uh, food ordering system called Portwax Barbecue, where you can create a new user account and start placing orders for food that you need. Uh, we have already created a de demo user. So let's use that to log in to the Portwax Barbecue app. Again, this user information is stored in the backend MongoDB database as a collection. And then once you are logged in, you can place a new order. So you can select a, a main dish, a couple of side dishes and a drink to go along with it. So let's select something that we want to eat and once we have selected all four things we'll hit the place order button this automatically generates an entry in the back in mongodb database uh, if you look at your order history you will see all three different uh, uh, orders that i've placed in the past including the one that i just placed right now if we go to our OpenShift console or OpenShift CLI and do uh, and look at the different application components. So you can see that here we have our front end components that are running as OpenShift pods or Kubernetes pods and our back end MongoDB database is actually running on a virtual machine. All of these components are running in the same namespace called app dash demo. This MongoDB instance is also backed by a persistent volume claim object. So making this a stateful application, but running on a VM. So if you do a OC get PVC, you see the PVC object, which is backed by a Portwork storage class. Next, let's go ahead and look at the MongoDB database specifically. So for that, we'll SSH into the MongoDB VM. And then once we are inside the MongoDB VM, we'll use the Mongo SH command line or Mongo shell to interact with our database and look at the collection. So uh, we use admin, we'll authenticate with our uh, standard user that I've created. It's just have it the username and password. Uh, in this case, the password is Portworks Bang, again, super secure. And then uh, the username is my user admin. Uh, once you have used these credentials to authenticate against the MongoDB database, you can actually go ahead and look at uh, or switch to the Parks BBQ database. So let's just use that. And then once uh, uh, once you are in the correct context, you can do a db.orders.find. And here you can see all the three different orders that we saw from the UI as well. So you see our grilled portable mushrooms, grilled cauliflower steaks, and then uh, smoked chicken that we ordered. So now that we know uh, what our database looks like, let's go ahead and uh, set up our disaster recovery solution. So Portworx DR has a few components that you need to set up. The first object being a cluster pair object between the primary and secondary site. A cluster pair object is nothing but a trust relationship between your primary and secondary OpenShift clusters so that when your application actually fails over, uh, it, the, the secondary cluster will spin things up. In addition to cluster pair, you also need a migration schedule. This is where you put everything together. You, this is kind of a recovery plan. So you specify the namespace where your application is running. In our case, it's app dash demo. Uh, you tell it the cluster pair to use. So app dash demo dash CP, the schedule policy. So even though this is a sync DR solution, your Kubernetes objects don't change as frequently. So that still needs a schedule. All your data is replicated all, uh, instantaneously before the write is even acknowledged. But the Kubernetes objects need a schedule. Uh, once your migration schedule looks good, let's go to the secondary site. So this is our secondary uh, OpenShift cluster. Uh, and if you do a get all in the app dash demo namespace, you will see that we don't have any components. So again, this is a brand new secondary site. The only thing that we have configured till this point is the cluster pair relationship between the primary and secondary. Uh, you will see that there are no pods, no VMs, no persistent volume claims as well. Now let's go ahead and apply the migration schedule on the primary side. So the file that we just looked at, let's go ahead and apply it. The migration schedule basically kicks off 
individual migration objects at the time interval that you specified using the schedule policy. So if you look at a stork CTL get migration schedule migration schedule in the demo uh, uh, app dash demo namespace, you will see all the details. It also shows you the last success time. So the first time you apply it, it automatically triggers a migration. So you can get details around that migration by doing stork CTL get migrations. You can see that it's successful. 10 different uh, resources were moved. The volumes are zero because again, the replication happens at the storage layer when it's sync, sync DR solutions with portworks. Now that our first migration has been successful, let's now again switch to the primary site and look at what objects have already been created. So if you do a OC get all in the app dash demo namespace, you will see that you, uh, you have your service objects, your deployment object, your route, your virtual machine objects, and even your PVC object. But the thing to note here is the deployment object has replica factor of zero again that was a different value on the primary side, but we don't want to start your application on the primary side at first migration that will create inconsistencies. So we store the metadata on how many replicas you should have, but we don't set that number on the secondary side unless there's a disaster event. So now let's simulate a disaster. Again, these steps that we are doing, the next three or four steps are only needed if you are active or your primary site is still active. If you lost your primary site or primary cluster completely, you don't need to do these steps. So the first, since we are doing a simulation, let's go ahead and deactivate our cluster domain. This puts our primary cluster out of sync. So now we have a surviving secondary site and the witness VM or witness HCD instance that lives outside these two OpenShift clusters. Uh, now that it's on sync, uh, out of sync, let's go ahead and scale down our applications as well. So again, not to create that application inconsistency between our two sites. So we'll go ahead and use the scaled replicas command and bring down the replica count on our primary site for our deployment object to zero. So again, this bring terminates all the three containers or th all the three pods that I had running. To do the same thing for our virtual machine object, instead of doing it from the CLI, let's try to do it from the UI. So we'll go ahead and navigate to our primary clusters OpenShift console. Here, if you navigate to the virtual machines tab, you can see our Mongo VM. And then we'll just use the action to stop the virtual machine, which basically turns it down. Again, if your primary cluster was inaccessible, you don't have to do any of these steps. This is just because we are trying to simulate a disaster event. Uh, once the VM has completely stopped, uh, we can go back to the CLI and uh, we can go ahead and suspend our migration schedule. So suspending a migration schedule basically means that no new data is being moved over from our primary to the secondary site. Again, this is only possible in a simulation. You don't have to actually do this in a real disaster event. Uh, if you do a OC get all in the app slash demo namespace, you will see that uh, all of our pods are gone. The deployment object has uh, uh, a zero as the replica count and uh, our VM is also in the stopped state. So let's go ahead and see that. Look at that. Uh, as you can see, no pods. Uh, the VM is in is in stopping stage. So now let's go ahead and suspend our migration schedule. And once that's done, it's time for us to go to the secondary site and actually perform the recovery. Uh, so let's go to the CLI for our secondary cluster and the way to the process to recover or restore your application is just one single command. All you need to do is use the stork CTL activate migrations in the uh, specific namespace. So in our case, it's app dash demo. And once you have this, we all since we already had all the metadata around how many repl replicas you had for your deployment object, what state the virtual machine was on. All of those things are now being deployed on the secondary side. So as you can see, nine seconds ago, our front end pods came online. Our virtual machine is now running since the past eight seconds. Uh, if we do a get VMs again, you will see uh, specifically that our MongoDB instance, our Mongo VM is now running. If you do a get PVC, you see our PVC is up and bound to the virtual machine. Uh, and then if uh, to access the application, since we are using a route inside our OpenShift cluster, we just need to edit the route to make sure that it, we can access it now that it's on the secondary cluster. So one small change, we are changing the host. We'll, we are keeping the, uh, the FQDN the same, apart from one change, which we are making uh, in the cluster name. So OCP-0 becomes OCP-1. And once you're happy with this change, you can go ahead and uh, uh, save it, uh, which basically triggers it to change. So now if you do a get all, you can see that we now have a new 
hostname to point to. Uh, let's do a OCP uh, OC get all and verify that. So you can see our route has changed. Our uh, front end pods are running. Our virtual machine, uh, which is hosting the MongoDB database is running. So everything looks good to go, but we can't just leave it here, right? We have to make sure that our food orders are still there. Like I don't want to order food and then maybe an hour later realize that it, it never, like nobody's ever working on it and you're still hungry. So instead of that, let's go ahead and verify that our orders are still there. So as you can see, our UI is already up. We can log in through the same demo user that we have created and please note uh, the the new fqdn for accessing the application uh, we don't want to place a new order so we'll just go to the order history and once you go to the order history you will see all the three same orders that we uh, placed on the primary side so our application is back up and running we can continue placing orders that's it for this demo thank you for watching